arguing whether masks should be mandated or not. I'm arguing that masks should be mandated. And I'm arguing that they should not. Presumably, masks are designed to keep harmful germs away from our mouth and our nose. However, wearing masks can actually be more dangerous than not wearing them. For instance, wearing a mask can give people this false sense of security, so they might break other um, restrictive guidelines like six feet apart or um, wearing a mask inside. And these things can um, bring people closer together, which can spread the virus. Furthermore, if you touch your nose or your glasses, if you have an itch or your glasses are fogged, you might spread more germs onto the entirety of your face, making you more infected. Furthermore, COVID really thrives on moisture and water content. That's one of the ways it spreads specifically through uh, basically spit between people. So when your mask is moist, it has an opportunity to grow. I see what you're saying, but personally coming from my experience, um, my beard isn't actually let down when I'm wearing a mask. For me, it's a physical reminder that, that COVID-19 exists. And while I feel this on my face, I'm hyper aware of the virus. So I make sure to do things like washing my hands, staying six feet away from people. And I try to remember, oh, I need to do these things in order to prevent spreading or infecting the virus myself. Also, when it comes to spreading the virus by punching your mask, I think we can actually implement good mask wearing policies, such as only touching your mask with, the, with your ears and making sure you don't touch your mask with your nose or your face. Also, when it comes to wearing the mask themselves, they're not for your own benefit. Basically, what they do is masks uh, block large droplets with multi-layered cloth masks, um, reducing basically as high as 50 to 70 percent of those droplets. So wearing them is more a decision of whether or not you're going to help protect other people. If you're staying safe, other people are staying safe, you know, those that virus shouldn't be the mask in the first place. Also, it depends on what mask you use. If you wear a N95 mask, that filtering is actually better than most cloth masks because it actually helps put moist, less moisture in the mask, makes them safer and more recommended to use. And you're totally right in some aspects. The N95 mask is obviously recommended by the CDC and many medical companies as being one of the safer options. However, unfortunately for the user, while it might protect you from outside forces, it has been shown to be one of the worst masks for people with already pre-existing lung diseases. So if you have an issue with your lungs, it's so restrictive, even when it comes to a person's own breathing, that some people just can't wear it. Luckily, there's alternatives like cotton masks or you're wearing or um, surgery masks. So there's a wide variety. Unfortunately, a lot of these masks don't tightly fit. In fact, there was research done by the military that said that the loose fitting sides actually could throw the virus behind you. And so in a lot of ways, it was more dangerous for someone to be behind you when you're wearing a loose fitted mask. And in that way, you can spread the disease. Well, it is true that when you breathe, your breath can go outside the mask. But generally, when you're when we're in a pandemic and, you know, you also implement other things such as a six feet rule, you're not going to be able to get around people that close to where the behind you is going to get through. You also have conversations face to face. So that protects the person that you're talking to or interacting with more. Not to say that it, it can't happen, but it's not there to stop. It's there to slow it down. For example, a recent study published in the Health Affairs um, compared COVID-19 growth rates before and after mandates in 15 states and the District of Columbia. It found that mask mandates led to a slowdown of daily COVID-19 growth rates, which became more apparent over time. The first five days after the mandate, the daily growth rate slowed by 0.9% points compared to the five days prior to the mandate. At three weeks, the daily growth rate had slowed down to 2% points. This data proves that basically when you have mask mandates, it can slow down COVID-19 and helping reduce the amount of deaths that we have by going to people who are immunocompromised. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, just like you said, masks only slow down the virus. In fact, the CDC also produced an article that says masks slow the spread of COVID. And both your argument and the article, there's an omission of it doesn't actually stop it altogether, you know? And for people who are like, well, we need more consistency or there's, you know, less deaths, that all just hinges on who gets it and who doesn't, regardless of who's wearing masks. There's been a lot of studies that showed older people and women both wore masks more than, you know, I guess your average male, you could say. 
um, but old people are still the ones dying. So obviously their mask wearing didn't really save them. And the end of the day, whether they're wearing masks in public and then hiding out in the house, mm -hmm. there's still been a lot more deaths with elderly people and people with pre-existing conditions. So like my point is, so what if it slows it down? Mm -hmm. It's still spread and it's still effective with people who also wear masks more. So I feel like you're saying that your argument is because it already can happen, might as well just let loose and just let it go faster, which I don't really see the ethical side of that. I feel like if you could, even if you can stop something, even if it, depending on how much of a net benefit it is, I still feel like we should try to contribute and help in any way. I feel like when it comes to something as simple as a cloth on your face, I don't feel like it's that hard for people to remember and to do. So I feel like even if it's such a little thing for us, I think the net benefit will still be greater than whatever inconvenience it can cause. Well, you're talking about trying to avoid unnecessary deaths, which is totally ethical and I support that view. The fact of the matter is there's a lot of things that kill people, like literally um, light bulbs falling out of the roof and ceilings have killed multiple people every single year. So sometimes we just can't avoid unnecessary deaths. Random things kill people. And we could address COVID as totally ephemeral. It was not here, you know, three years ago and now it's seemingly um, passing away. And you talk about ethics as in um, preserving other people's lives, but we totally ignore the autonomy issue. You know, like a mandate is incredibly strict. It, gr it grants the government more control over what we can and can't do and where we can and can't go. And it attacks our individualism, which is something that Western civilization, America in particular, are built on and which we appreciate and gain a lot from. So getting rid of that could severely harm our society. Mandate, I think, is just incredibly strict for something that really just happens with a lot of things. Not to say those aren't good points and how basically the government has taken away our individualism and our rights and everything, but CDP guidelines are what they are. Guidelines. I think that it's not necessarily it should be mandated by the government, but this different businesses and organizations should do their part in whether or not they should go with the guidelines. Because if we just all do our part, you know, we can stop, you know, the virus and we can eventually have time to, you know, get it under control, maybe have vaccinations that we rely on or continue to use vaccinations. And you'll study has shown recently that it is going down. So I feel like because of our help with masks and because of the studies shown in, in the in health affairs with the District of Columbia and the 15 other states that you know, after three weeks, the percentage is going down. I feel like masks do work and they should, at least in some way, be regulated, if not by the government because of our laws, by organizations and companies and public places we go to. I don't necessarily believe there's a correlation between successful mask wearing and a downward trend in COVID. However, I can subscribe to the idea that businesses should have their rights to enforce some mass mandates or rules within the company themselves because that becomes a little bit more specific but just having a governmental and nationwide mandate i think is a little excessive once again it is a world view but with other things i could data about as well um like abortion and everything what you this it doesn't this is not just about your life and you can't make decisions for other people and that's why mass mandates they're not about your own safety like i said in conclusion i basically think that masks should be mandated because overall it's a, a moral ethics and whether or not you should take care of other people i also think that it's up to businesses and the companies to mandate it making it not harmful to our our individuality and our laws placed by our government also there are studies proven that if we do implement things such as the six feet rule, the masks do work and all the reasons why it doesn't work um, is limited when we implement other things as well. And that masks actually work because of the type of masks you wear like N95s. Mm -hmm. And I believe that masks should not be mandated. And I'd like to conclude with a quote by Michael de Montagne. And he said, nothing is so firmly believed as what we least know. And that can be a little food for thought. Well, thanks for debating me today, Taylor. Don't touch me. COVID. Oh. I'll break it. That's funny. Yeah. You know what? I think I want to do like a black screen and then cut to the last ending.
Yeah, I'll do that. Shit. All right, we're not. I'm doing that in the video. What? I'm doing that in the video.